save all of mankind. Lately, my daughter has developed a similar problem with Atari Warlords. Now, with video pinball, my husband is acting funny lately. With Atari games so ingenious, so involving, so intense, I ask you, Atari Anonymous, is this problem contagious? the video game that lets you pretend you're E.T., running away from secret agents, falling into danger, finding a phone to call home, and discovering the best thing on Earth. A friend. E.T., only from Atari. price ever at Radio Shack on the most powerful transportable cellular phone system. Just $7.99 when you sign up with Radio Shack's authorized cellular phone carrier. Go where you want to go. There's nothing else to buy and it's ready to go wherever you go. Call when you want to call. Use in your car or go portable and take it along. Radio Shack's complete transportable cellular phone system. Just $7.99 only at Radio Shack, the technology store. Say her name. Me, Noodle. Play games. Pick Fab. Oh. And love you back. Uh oh, Achoo. <laughs> Your Furby sneezed. Achoo. And gave mine a cold. Furby loves you, love and Me love you. Furby, the Giga Pet you really. Show and tell time. Another <laughs> teddy bear? My teddy's name is Teddy Ruxpin. He talks, he tells stories, he. <laughs> Four battlers not included. Hi, my name is Teddy Ruxpin. Can you and I be friends? Yeah. I really enjoy talking to people. I would like you. Teddy Ruxpin, the storytelling bear, comes with illustrated book and cassette from Worlds of Wonder. Wonder Stadium not included. determined your parents were to give you the gift of knowledge, no matter how many gifts it took. Today, you have a big advantage with the Apple II GS. Apple II computers are found in more schools than any other computer. Your parents gave you the world. You can give your kids the universe. The Commodore VIC-20. Welcome to the age of the computer. As you grow with Vic, Vic grows with you. The Vic 20, only $359. Includes bonus pack and data cassette. Games Unlimited, 378 Portage Avenue. Your official Commodore computer dealer. Commodore Vic 20, the one to grow on.
to match the higher intelligence of the new Commodore 128. An Apple IIc would have to add three more IIcs to expand to 512K. An extra keypad, 30 block graphic sets, color sprites, two more voices, four instruments, a cartridge port, a joystick port, and a Commodore 64. Commodore 128 personal computer, a higher intelligence at a lower price. Radio Shack TRS-80 put the world of color computing into your home. Instant loading program packs turn any color TV into an exciting game arcade. And there's more. The color computer is an educational aid, a home management tool, and up-to-the-minute electronic information service. The programmable, expandable TRS-80 color computer from $399 only at Radio Shack, the biggest name in little computers. Radio Shack understands that a computer purchase is a serious personal and business decision. But what's really important is the company behind the computer. At Radio Shack, when you buy a computer, you buy a company. A company committed to technology, service, and support. We'll be here when you need us. With a telephone hotline, training, education, and excellent service. Tandy Computers, in business, for business. Tandy, clearly superior. This is Apple's Macintosh. And this is some of the software that's being developed for Macintosh. At the rate of one new program every business day. Alright, that's close enough to a start. Let's switch over to uh, this camera, make sure everything's working. Hey, it's late here. I figured I would try to stream for like, I don't know, an hour or so on a school night. Um, I want to do this more often. I don't want it to be just a weekend thing. I like uh, totally wiped out after a day at work, but we'll see if we can do this thing. Um, so that's me on that camera. It's the workbench. I'm trying to get this into like a more functional, mostly tidy area. Um, that's my stomach, but hopefully it's going to be a board soon. I might have to play around with this camera a bit. I'm trying to decide what board to build. Um, I may start with this bill, this board, which is, there we go. Need to learn better presentation skills. This is a digital IO board for the uh, RC14. And it's got some buttons, it's got some lights, it does some things. Makes a thing, uh, you can write some basic programs, peek and poke some things. Uh, slightly less exciting, I guess, but I'm still interested to use it, is this um, real-time clock board. This is an actual, like, time clock that will tell the DOS operating system what time it is, and uh, you can stamp files with modification timestamps. Um, the third board that I would really like to get to is this, which is a, I need to learn which direction to put things. This is a terminal driven by a Raspberry Pi Pico. Um, this will allow me to connect the RC2014 to a monitor and hook a keyboard up to it so it's a self-contained computer. Oh yeah, and speaking of a computer, this is what it looks like now. I, uh, where's a good place to put this? Here's a good place to put this. I 3D printed some cases for it. I'm not sure if I'm in love with individual module cases yet. 
in part because I think I need to remodel some of them in uh, using 360. But like I say, this is the serial module. I had to uh, carve a hole, a couple holes to get to the serial ports. I mean, they're kind of neat. They just kind of like snap together. I found this on printables. The filament is neat, but yeah, it's nice because there are these little hooks that the PCB slides into, and it gives you like a nice grip when you go to push it into the card header, or the pin header. And then also, what's clever, I didn't design these, someone on Printables designed these. Um, what's clever is this bottom part is kind of angled. So when you push it down onto the, uh, the back plane, the angles kind of like guide you into the proper position to, to seat the thing. So I really like that. Um, but another downside of this thing is the uh, cases don't fit the single header modules. So I don't know. Going back and forth on whether I like this case or anything. Oh yeah, and then there's these, um, there's these things. You can cover your unused slots. They're just little, like, plastic, uh, covers. It's kind of nice. I'm thinking when it's all done, it'll look kind of cyber decky. I kind of want to add some more RGB lights to it. I wish it were slightly more translucent for the, um, system modules, but I don't know. We'll see. Playing around with it. I'm trying to think of a way to like make this thing feel more like a finished appliance sitting on my desk. Um, boop, 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 what are we doing? So yeah, so there's that. But I got like three more modules to, to build for this thing. I don't know. What should I go for first? It's like... Six after 10 here. I want to have a hard stop at 11 because this is kind of an experiment. I want to see if I can do this in the middle of a weekday um, and not like fully exhaust myself because I would like to do this more often. I'd like to do hobbies more often and I'd kind of like to share what I'm doing. Um, I don't know. Let's do the blinking lights first because that's going to be exciting. I would like to play with that. Uh, now, one of the cool things about this kit is all the color. The standard kit is just like green PCBs. Um, and this would be just like a row of mono color LEDs. But this kit comes with all the colors and all the buttons are colored. So one of the things I want to do is make sure I've got the right colors and the right slots. I did this um, Earlier this summer, where I, earlier last year in the summer, I did sort out all the uh, LED colors. And I got a little, little battery here that I think I can test them with. Um, whoop, whoop, whoop. I have them on this camera. So let's see. This one claims to be white. Yeah. Uh, yeah, it's white. Trying to, trying to get it in a good spot where I could like test the LED and show you. Um, that's red. Yeah, red. I don't want to burn them out. This is supposed to be like an orange. It's pretty orange. Um, this one should be yellow. I'm yeah, pretty sure that's yellow. Maybe I should tip the camera up for now while I'm doing this. Doody doot. Um, this one should be green. Yeah, that's a pretty solid green. Um, this is like a, like a purple-violet. Let's tip that up even further. 
Yeah, this is like a purple. I'm trying to get, because there's also button colors that go along with this. Yeah, that's like a purple. Kind of looks green on the camera, but it, it looks purple in person. Um, we got, uh, this is like, this is going to be a brown button. color that is. Actually, I'm not getting any light out of that one at all. Hopefully I didn't destroy it. That one's pink. That one's definitely pink. Yeah, it's ridiculously fascinating that uh, we have some like, colors of LEDs. Oh no, it's lighting up. It's just very weak. I might have killed it, I don't know. But, um... When I was a kid, the red LEDs were all that existed for a little while. And I think uh, green LEDs came next. I know I just saw, like, a, a title for a YouTube video talking about the story of how nearly impossible blue LEDs are. I'm gonna have to watch that. Alright. So here I'm just, um... Yep. Just bending these over so that they stay in the board. Because I'm gonna flip it upside down. Put it in the helping hands to, uh, the solder. So I'm just kind of... I'm gonna make these as stable as possible. I got my solder iron powdered up. Also, I'm gonna be careful not to actually like break these leads while I'm doing this. There's a lot of them, so we don't want them to kind of get in each other's way. There we go. I also want them to be flush to the board. So I'm just kind of like bending them at angles, so that kind of like clamps them down to the board. And then when I solder them, and after I'm done soldering them, I'm going to clip them off. I am a little concerned about one of these LEDs. I'm wondering if I killed it at some point. This one that claims to be purple doesn't seem to be lighting up when I use the coin cell. I think I got the polarity right. I hate to keep bending the legs over and over, but... So, if I understand right, the long leg is positive. Oh no, there it goes. Oh, that's plenty bright. Never mind. Oop. At some point, this is going to be the, um... The battery for the coin for the real-time clock, so I also don't want to run the battery down. Okay, those look pretty good. I'm gonna solder those in first, and then I'll go for the buttons. I got my soldering iron already heated up. Yeah, but it'll just go. There we go, that's pretty stable.
I'm also trying to like figure out how to arrange my bench so that this stuff isn't frustrating to work on and I'm not getting in my own way. At some point I want to get better workbenches in this space. Got some more room. Not for now, I just have this one little workbench. It's not a terrible workbench. Here I'm just soldering. Just soldering these little LEDs in. I may uh, stop chattering so much once I get down to work, which is um, why I'm playing the music. And I'll probably end up neglecting chat for long periods as I stare down at the work, but that's okay. Trying to do some basic soldering here. I guess uh, one of these cameras are going to be staring at the top of my head a lot. I guess that's where a face cam doesn't come in all that handy. I'm not bridging these. Yeah, it's kind of funny. I'm out here in my shop tonight doing this instead of uh, playing more Cyberpunk 2077. I rolled credits on that game the other night, but of course there's always more to do. All right, so we got the LEDs all soldered. Let's see, how do they look on the camera? They're not terrible. They're probably good enough. Then I got some, um, the flat edged nippers here. I go through and snip each of these. I also kind of I save a lot of those little ends. They end up being handy sometimes. Like for aligning other parts. I guess eventually I'll toss them. But they're good for like Bridging little things. My hand's in the way of that camera. I can get behind the camera here. You don't want to see my uh, hairy knuckles magnified. Closer, I think. I'm trying not to like, you know, cut through the solder ball, but I do want to leave very little of the lead there.
All right, that's pretty neat. Hopefully, I'll still think so when I flip the board back over. Yeah, pretty good. Mostly flush. Not looking too bad. Oh, maybe I'll put the buttons in. That'll be a little more challenging, but I think I can like get the buttons in and uh, tack like just one in of each. Although these kind of grip in pretty well by themselves. Yeah, it might help. Because I'm going to want to look at this eventually anyways. See if I can find a picture of all the boards again. Show you my browser. This is what I'm building. Um, this one in the corner in particular is what I'm building. I really need a wireless keyboard in here too. So yeah, this is in particular what I'm building. Not too complicated. And I can see the orientation of the switches there. Hey, one of the nice things about these little buttons is a lot of times I can just fit right in there. That's a little awkward to show this on camera because I'm uh, gonna hunker in front of the close-up camera with this. Straight these pins. Maybe I can use some tweezers. Pins are a little bent. Oh. Let's take it to the bend. Take my glasses off for a second. Easier for me to see since I'm so nearsighted. Come on, you know you want to get in there. force it because then I'll just bend the pins but there we go yeah so just uh gotta get that button in there wasn't quite one to fit well that's one down I got uh seven more to go I know they're around here somewhere yeah, so like, here's the red one. Maybe. That's a pretty small, snug fit. Yeah, I guess that's part of it. It's, these are pretty tight tolerances. And if I make those legs a bit straighter, that might be the trick. 
Because the, the legs, as is, yeah, okay, that worked. The legs are kind of claw-like, which is good. We're keeping them in the socket. Well, I'm about to solder them, but... Not so good when I'm trying to get them in there in the first place. trying to make sure they're straight in here, which they're not exactly. <sighs> yeah, these legs are a little bent. I'm just going to try to straighten them a little bit. So then maybe they can drop right in. I also need to be careful with these tweezers because they are very sharp. sure all the legs of this button are kind of equidistant in the little, little solder holes. And it'd also be nice if they all lined up. I guess that's more aesthetic than anything, but I know it'll bug the crap out of me if they're all kind of staggered. Probably fussing too much with it. There we go. Oh, that's good enough. That's good enough. Just trying to line them up and make sure they all fit in there. <clears throat> hopefully not all of them will be this hard to get uh, just right. I'm gonna hopefully get a knack for them as I'm seating them all. black buttons left. I know I've got some other colors here. And I'm fishing through my parts bin. Maybe uh, I should look at the top screen for that. Hmm. I may have used all the colorful buttons on other boards already. Which um, is a little sad for this board. Tempted to uh, desolder them from the other boards if that's so. Kind of sad. Ah, there we go. I got, uh, most only uh, looking for a red button, which I may have used.
I don't know if that's worth uh, desoldering. Do, 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 do. So I'm only missing like two colored buttons to match that pattern. Pretty sure I know where one of them is. I don't think it's here in the uh, serial module. Yeah, no buttons in the serial module.
All right, well, I might be missing a button. Colored button. I don't know that it matters all that and terribly much, but part of the reason I got this kit was for the colors, so it'd be a shame for it not to come together as planned. Oh, you know what? No. I do have it. Okay, I'm just misidentifying buttons here. I thought they're all black. But one is kind of a brown, brown color. I don't know. They're close enough. Well, I don't know. These all look kind of brown to me. Yeah, you know, I don't know that I care so much about the color match there that I want to risk screwing with this board anymore. You can kind of see there's a halo around the ESP8266. These die sublimation boards, um, I used to, I gotta clean that up too. I gotta put some isopropyl alcohol on there. Uh, but these, the die on these boards fades if you hit it with a hot air gun. So, I don't know. There's a few other little weird oddities that I've done on this board. I guess it makes it mine. So, um, I don't know that I care enough to try to desolder that button. Just means it's uh, my computer. Oh yeah, it's kind of neat. These, uh, kind of like playing with a bunch of cartridges. These 3D cases, and these all slot in. Mm, that's not where I want that board. So yeah, it's looking kind of kind of cyber ducky to me. It does obscure the color of the boards a bit much. I'm wondering if I can help change that by putting some lighting inside there, you know, there's a couple LEDs or something. Oh, all right, well, let's get to, let's get those last few buttons in and get to soldering the buttons. It would be great if I could finish this board tonight. Yeah, I'm trying to more switches, but they're all pretty much... the same sort of button. Dun, 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 dun. Yeah, it's fine. All right, back to it. So again, I'm just trying to straighten these out a little bit. Chicken dance. The sun. Um, 
It's going pretty hard. With those crunchy, cheesy uh, guitar samples. Alright, one more button. <clears throat> then I'll have some sockets. I have some, oh, uh, crap ton of resistors. Also need to kind of, I think, go on another shopping trip through YouTube. See if I can find some more Amiga demos. So I'm not playing the same songs all the time. They're good tunes, though. Uh, all super colorful, but they're pretty colorful. There's a few that aren't. It's fine, it's fine, it's fine. Really, one's black, one's brown, and one could be like a peachy orange color, but um, yeah, it's already used, it's already being useful in another board. And that board's working, and that was one of my last streams. I was trying to get that board to work, and so I am disinclined to putz with it much more. So, okay. These all look like they're in there. Let's, uh, let's get in the helping hands. Commence the soldering. It is uh, quarter to 11 here, so I have 15 minutes left of the time I wanted to give myself a stream. So... Let's see how much farther I can get. Time to stare at the top of my head again. One thing I try to do a lot when I'm soldering is the thing of like, put a leg of the component between the iron and the solder. You don't always manage it. But I often do. Also, I don't want to heat these joints up too much because this, again, is colorfully dyed board and heat damages the dye. Stay mindful of that. Since I bought these boards, in part for their color, I like to be a festive computer. Almost there. I 
Oh yeah, I think that's all the buttons. What next? I got some pin headers in there, or um, some sockets, chip sockets. Not too bad, not really any visible change, except that the parts are now in there for good. All right, well now we need some chip sockets. Three chip sockets. See if we can find those. Just so happens I got a bunch of chip sockets. And also I want to make sure to match. I want to make sure to match where the notch goes because that also helps guide which orientation to put the chip in. Yeah, so like, you can see there's a little uh, notch right there. There's a little notch on the socket. Make sure those match up. That's somewhat important because that's also the way the chip needs to be slotted in. Maybe I should leave you in the helping hands for now while I place the chip sockets. I think these are the appropriate ones. Is that enough pins? Yeah, looks correct. That looks correct. Okay, those all look right. Oh yeah, we got a bunch of diodes and resistors and jumpers to solder in this bugger. I'll have to look at the um, at the schematic or something for this to be sure I'm doing the right thing. Okay, so just double checking all the notches in the right spots. Yep. All right. So here's a tricky part. You know what I'm gonna do? I'm gonna do something stupid. Oh no! It's already falling out. I could use painter's tape, but I'm going to do something dumb. Helping hand doesn't just have to hold the board. Helping hand could also hold solder. And what I want to do, make sure the socket's in there and like tack corners. So if I tack a couple pins on each of these, it's pretty good. And then I can put it in the helping hands and uh, I can flip it upside down, put it in the helping hands and solder the rest of the pins. I just gotta get my thumb out of the way. I'm sure there are tools to make this easier. I've, uh, I don't know what they are. Painter's tape, blue tack, something.
This is so dumb. There we go. Couple more pins. And then I'm relatively sure they're not gonna just fall out. Oh, come on. Yeah, so now they're pretty solid in there. They're gonna fall out. So now... I'm not really rattling. Oh yeah, they're rattling a little bit. It's because I'm gonna solder these last two. Yeah, there's got to be a smarter way to do this, but... Not in so far as I have tools available right now. Alright, so let's get that out of there. I'll solder them for real. Hopefully that'll go quick. I've got about six minutes left. I don't think I'm finishing this board tonight. But at least maybe I can finish these uh, chip sockets. Yeah, this is a long demo. Get there one chip socket done. I could probably use a smaller iron chip. It's really nice that all these um, chips are socketed. I I can do all my screw-ups on sockets rather than the actual IC packages. Okay, that's two sockets done, last one.
All right, that's the chip sockets. It is two to 11. <clears throat> okay, me, stop. Let's inspect our work. Not terrible, not great. I think it'll do though. Um, yeah. I think I'll, uh, I'll ship it. My own, uh, my own house. Did I get to that one? That's right. Little. Okay, so yeah, and this is what we're building. This is what I got so far. Looking pretty good. Um, I wanted to see how much I could get done in roughly an hour of streaming, both to like make myself do the streaming and to just see what I could get done. I'd say this is maybe half done because we still got um all these resistors like on either side i've got all these resistors to find out of my my snack pack here um and i got a bunch of diodes down here to find and then we got these uh this these headers to, this header road up the so i'd say that's maybe like half done and i'm not going to string for another hour so let's be a responsible adult uh, tidy up a little bit, but I think I'm going to call this a, this a night. So yeah, I've been streaming for about an hour and five minutes. The five minutes is, uh, counting my intro. I think this was a pretty good little experiment. I don't know if anybody watched, I didn't see anybody in chat, but then I wasn't looking at chat. Yeah, I didn't see anybody see anything. But that's alright. Because I barely announced this, and I just wanted to see um, what I could make happen tonight. Alrighty then, so this is what I got. I'm probably going to post this to YouTube also once I got the VOD. And I don't know, I might try it again tomorrow night. We'll see. I would like to finish this board. I would also like to finish the other two boards I have to the side. Um, it would be nice if I got all this done this week. So. This is me signing off for tonight. Um, if you're watching this now and just kind of lurking, thanks for coming by. If you watch this later, thanks for watching it. We'll see if I get any better at this. Have a good night.